How's it going everyone? Uh, welcome to this video. Uh, this is another illustration that I did a couple weeks back um, and it's based off of my my grandfather's uh, rooftop garden that he has uh, out in Osaka. This is one of my favorite spots. Um, one because it's somewhere I used to go to when I was a kid a lot, like at least once a year. Um, right outside of his home there's a giant building called the Shura Hall and it's this giant building that's uh, shaped like a ship. It's like a recreational building and when I was younger they actually had the second story just it, it was a free arcade so you can go in and you can play the N64, you can you can play like Sega games, Nintendo, PlayStation, all of that. So all the kids would go there and wait in line to play the games together and they also had like a video area where you can um, rent uh, VHS tapes and watch them in this little booth. Um, but yeah, so this spot specifically, it's just very nostalgic and reminds me of my childhood. So the illustration isn't completely accurate in terms of how my grandfather's garden looks, but I, I drew it to the best of my, my memory and I kind of just went wild with the, with the plants. Um, if you actually look up Shuber Hall on Google Maps, uh, it'll be in Fujidera. Uh, Osaka. You can, you know, zoom around and uh, find my grandfather's house on the corner, and you'll be able to see the the actual building that the garden's on. But you won't be able to see the garden because Google Street View or whatever is only from like bottom bottom up. So you kind of get like a worm's eye view, and it's kind of distorted. But anyways, so this drawing here, uh, how I worked on it. I started off with an F pencil, uh, a Tombow F pencil, graphite pencil. As you can see, there's a lot of erasing going on, um, which is pretty standard for me since uh, I can't ever get anything right the first time around. Uh, anyways, after that, I move on to inking the drawing with my little fountain pen there. Uh, if you're interested in that fountain pen, it's a Twispy Eco fountain pen and I use the Archimentus Archive ink. It's a nice black ink that dries super quick so you can actually uh, watercolor pretty quickly after uh, applying it. Um, yeah, so I, I do pencils, inks, and then once I get into inks, or once I'm done with my inks, I get into watercoloring. And when it comes to watercoloring the, the piece, um, I definitely test out my colors first on a separate piece of paper. And I learned that it's better to test out the, the colors and your blending on another sheet of paper. It's just as good as the paper that you're using to do the illustration. Because if you start testing things and blending things on a separate crappy piece of paper, it's not gonna show you the same results that you would get on a nice 100% cotton arches paper or something, you know? So I learned that uh, don't be precious with your paper, even if it's an expensive piece, it, you gotta use it to to practice, you gotta use it to, to see the effects that you would be getting on the actual illustration. So for this painting specifically, I actually don't like the way the colors came out. I didn't spend enough time actually uh, doing test test pieces on the side to, to see what the colors are going to look like. Uh, I kind of just went in and, uh, and worked on it, which I think was a mistake and I wish I actually took some time to do some uh, thumbnail paintings, I guess, of the same drawing. That way I would have known, okay, this is going to work. Um, I did like the way the leaves came out. Uh, I kind of blended the, uh, yellow with a uh, sap green. I can't remember which yellow, <laughs> uh, but you know, it's it's a lot of just trial and error. And I think, you know, I'm learning as I go. So I think from this painting, I now know I want to do more more testing before actually applying the paint. Um, because once you apply watercolor paint, it's pretty tough to 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 get off. It's not very forgiving. So you know, as I constantly kind of tell myself, you live and you learn. Um, that's pretty much it for this video. Um, I did purchase a um, Etcher mini palette. Uh, if you're not familiar with that, uh, look up Etcher Lab and check out the mini palette. They just uh, released it a couple days ago and I purchased it because one, it's super portable and two, um, my watercolor palette is getting larger in terms of how many colors I have and I figured um, why not try this mini palette that's super portable um, it works well for my desk currently since I have a really small workspace and I'll probably do a a quick review on it tell you guys how I think or 
how I feel about it, and I look forward to using it because I can actually put all my colors in there. Um, also, I'm probably going to redo my my video on Procreate versus Photoshop because I'm starting to uh, enjoy using Procreate for my, my digital inking, so um, look forward to that. Otherwise, you guys take it easy. Hope to see you in the next video. Bye.